So I'll say here, this is a video lesson, Reminders of E. This lesson is not intended to introduce E or to get into any particular depth. These are reminders of the natural log base and this very special number E so that we can include this special number in our calculus with derivatives and integrals. E is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth. It's an irrational number. You can think of it as a balancing between this expression, which is going to 1 from the right, and the exponent, which is wanting that base to go to infinity, but it balances and comes out to be approximately 2.71828182846 and continues because E is irrational. It's only a coincidence that we have this repetition of these four digits. There is a similar expression, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth, and if we add x to the exponent, then this is equivalent to the expression e to the x. e to the x, or power base e, is exponential. Power base e and log base e crop up in mathematics that model uh, natural science quite often. Exponential functions have a familiar curve. e to the x looks approximately like this. And if we compared it to another familiar exponential base, 2 to the x, e to the x would be shown to, to grow a little more quickly because e is close to 2, but a little greater. The inverse of an exponential is logarithmic. So the inverse of power base e looks like this, and we can call it the natural log of x. All log equations have a domain which is only positive numbers. Log base e of x has a special name and a symbol for it. Ln of x means natural log of x. And it's been given a special symbol and a special name because it comes up in natural mathematics so often. All of the properties of logarithms and exponents um, are useful in dealing with equations with natural log base. The one that captures the inverse nature of log base e and power base e is the simple property that the natural log of e is equal to 1. Natural log is the inverse of power base e. They cancel each other out. The derivative of any uh, exponential function is equal to the exponential function times the natural log of its base. So the derivative of this specific exponential function e to the x is itself times the natural log of its base e, and with a reminder of this property, this is the same thing as e to the x times 1, or just e to the x e to the x is its own derivative, which is quite profound. The integral of any exponential function, b to the x, is equal to itself times 1 over the natural log of the base. Don't forget c. So the integral of e to the x is itself times
times 1 over the natural log of e, which is 1 over 1, or just 1. So we don't need to include it if we're multiplying by 1. The integral of e to the x is itself, just like the derivative, but don't forget c. One very common application of E is in continuous compounding or instantaneous growth. Imagine investing in a bank, an amount of money, an initial amount, compounded continuously for a certain amount of time at a certain rate. The equation to calculate how much money you'd have is a is equal to i times e to the rt, where a is the amount that grows after a certain amount of time t. i is the initial amount, or the amount at time zero. R is the growth rate. And T is time. And in this formula, R, the growth rate, like 6% for an investment, would just be the 6%, or converted to a decimal 0.06. You wouldn't add 1 to it because the e, the base of this power e to the rt, came from the mathematics that already included the addition of 1. Again, when you use this formula, r is the growth rate. We don't add 1 to it to get the value that we put into it. If we had 6% growth, the value of r would be 0.06 not 1.06.